let's talk about one of the simplest models for a particle located in some region. Um, and so for this, we'll consider the potential V of X to be zero inside zero to L and infinity everywhere else. So it's a box with infinitely strong walls. Recall that solutions take the form, solutions to the Schrodinger equation take the form capital Psi is equal to lowercase Psi e to the minus I E T over H bar. Uh, for some energy E. The lowercase psi is a solution to the time independent Schrodinger's equation. And that time independent Schrodinger's equation looks like minus h bar squared over 2m, the second derivative of psi with respect to x, plus the potential times psi is equal to e times psi. The potential here is zero inside the box, and the infinite walls at the edges of the box give us boundary conditions that psi at zero is zero, and psi at L is also zero. So this differential equation becomes psi double prime is equal to minus k squared psi, where k squared is 2me over h bar. I just moved all the constants over. Solutions to this ordinary differential equation are sines and cosines, as you can easily check or you can derive if you know how to find solutions to that. So psi of x is a sine of kx plus b cosine of kx. In principle, we could have both sine and cosine, and we need to figure out what the constants a and b are. Well, the first thing that we could do to try and figure those out is let's just use our boundary conditions at 0 and L and see if they tell us anything about these unknown constants. So first let's look at 0. So psi at 0 is 0. Plugging 0 in to our expression for psi, uh, sine of 0 is 0. And then I'm, I have plus b cosine of 0, so it's b. So b has to be 0 in order to identify that boundary condition. Psi of x then must be something like a sine of kx. At x equal to L, I have a sine of KL, and that must be equal to zero. Um, I guess I could try and set a equal to zero, but I don't really want that, because then my whole wave function psi is equal to zero for all x, and then I just don't have a wave function. So instead, I'm going to solve this by saying that k times L must be equal to an integer multiple of pi, like 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, rearranging that, I can write that k is n pi over L, um, and so that's a k that depends on n. But we also have an expression above for k, so k is 2me over L square rooted, excuse me, 2me over h bar squared, square rooted. Um, and so if we combine these two, then we find uh, that the allowed energies our e sub n is h bar squared n squared pi squared over 2m l squared. So what this means is that only certain energies, e sub n, are allowed for the particle inside of a box. This is the main idea behind quantized energy levels in quantum mechanics. OK, so we found k. And so that tells us that psi sub n is a sine of n pi over l x. But that's only true between 0 and l. Outside of 0 and l, the wave function is 0 everywhere else. OK, so capital psi of x and t, the full wave function, is this, a sine of n pi x over l, and then e to the minus i e sub n t over h bar. While that's actually a solution, a more general solution is to take a sum over all possible n values with the coefficients a sub n depending on n. So we'll take any of those wave functions and add them all up. Of course, this e sub n is the same e sub n we had before. It's that h bar squared n squared pi squared over 2ml squared. OK. so. Again, remember that this wave function is only valid between 0 and L. Outside of that, it's 0. The a sub n's, these constant coefficients, are determined by our normalization condition um, and by our initial conditions. 
So let's look at uh, one example of how that might work. So let's say, uh, for an example, that capital Psi is just in the ground state initially. By ground state, we mean n equal to 1 here. So that means capital Psi of x and t is a1 sine of pi x over l e to the minus i e sub 1 t over h bar. So what this would look like if we were to plot this between 0 and l is it would look like a wave function that just has one bump. Okay, so what is this constant coefficient a sub 1? Well, for us here, that's going to be determined by normalization. In particular, we need that the total probability to find the wave function anywhere is equal to 1. So that means that the integral from 0 to L of our wave function squared, a1 sine squared, of pi x over l dx must be equal to 1. That integral we can do and gives us a1 squared times l over 2, which tells us that a1 is the square root of 2 over l. So our properly normalized ground state wave function, in this case for a particle in a box, is the square root of 2 over l sine of pi x over l e to the minus i e1 t over h bar. Again, remember this E1 is the energy we saw before, h bar squared pi squared over 2m l squared. Again, this is what we call the ground state wave function for a particle in the box. The excited states are the non-zero n values for n greater than 1. 